my mind is blown. I made this, this literature review with a 12 word prompt. Look at it, it's referenced, it's got a great structure, it is perfect for a paper or to start your literature review. It's incredible and it comes down to using this free and I cannot believe it. Free. tool from Google called Notebook LM. It's experimental, look at that. So it'll probably get a little bit better than this, but this is what I think you should know about it. So when you first log in, this is what it doesn't look like. It actually looks like a blank version of this page without these notes. And the first thing you need to do is upload your sources. This bit here is blank. So you click up this little plus icon, bonk, and you can add sources. Now you can add up to 50 sources, so that's 50 papers. So if you're writing a literature review for a paper, for um, a thesis, you can add up to 50 references. And I even put in a massive document like my thesis, which was 255 pages, and it only counted as one document. Love that. So you can put it in here. You've also got Google Drive, you've got links, you've got paste text, all of the stuff get put in here and you can put in marketing plans, course readings, research notes. This makes it easy to talk to multiple documents at once. We've seen similar tools, but this one really, really does such a great job and you'll see why in a minute. So the first thing that you do is head over to chat. So down here, we've got view chat. You click that bonk and you can see in here, you've got nine sources and this is where the magic happens. So. The first thing I asked it, with all of these selected, you can unselect or just select the ones you want if you just want a particular uh, paper to sort of like discuss. But you click here, select all sources, and then I put down here, can you help me understand the research focus of these papers? And it did a summary of each individual paper for me. Here it's got a multi-layered approach to that, that paper. It's got accurate thickness measurement, a graphene. It's got my thesis, which interestingly, sometimes on a big document like a thesis which is many hundreds of pages long it misses the last bit because of the um, the number of tokens the number of information it can actually hold whereas here it knows that I've used F8BT P3 P8, P3HT, B, PCBM, which are much later on in my thesis. However, it doesn't do the device stuff, which is really deep. Nonetheless, it's got the important information for me to know about. Um, the effect of calcium cathode, blah, blah, blah. So all of these are my papers and it gives me a nice sort of like easy summary, which is reference. Now the references mm, are hit and miss, but the information in this is correct. For example, if I click on one of these, you can see that it takes me to the figure where it's mentioned. Now, when you upload information, it does not include the images. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that was a big thing for me. But nonetheless, you do get a link straight to where it found that information. Really, really great. Sometimes it links to like the wrong bits. If you go to my thesis, for example, uh, where are we going? Uh, where's my thesis? Here it is. So sometimes it takes you to a weird part of the paper. Like this is my acknowledgement section. Um, and for some reason it's highlighted that I have no idea why, but really it's this bit I'm interested in. Sometimes it takes you to the references part of your paper, which is a little bit confusing, but nonetheless, it does a pretty good job. You just need to double check where it's referencing from, but you should be doing that anyway, you naughty little minx. All right, so that is all of the stuff that I wanted to know about these papers and it gave me every single one that I selected as an individual summary. Mwah! So good. Now I can save that as a note. You just click here, save to note. And now that it's saved to note, it goes here into your notes page. So you can see I've got some here. But if I want to go back to chat, I can click here, view chat, easy peasy, blonk. And then I wanted to know more. So down here, you see it recommends things that it thinks you should uh, ask next. And I just clicked on one of those and I asked, what are the two main challenges, blah, blah, blah. And it gave me the two main challenges and it was all references. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five. Let's click there and see what happens. So I click on it and it takes me down to the aims and outline of my thesis. Let's click here and see what happens. It's also got, yeah, look, this bit. It's a bit weird that it's referencing this, but I think it's interested really in this bit, but for some reason it's got all of the like metadata from that paper up here but nonetheless it does direct me to where it found that information um and 
if I click here, oh no, actually let's go back here because that was a fun little thing that you should know about. You can also sort of like highlight things and it says suggest related ideas, summarize, oh no, it's all the way over here. Summarize, add to note, help me understand the selected notes. So you can interact with the papers that you select. So once you select this part of a paper, you can use these buttons down here to go deeper and understand the paper better. Fantastic. All right. What I really wanted to know is given all of this information from these nine things I uploaded, can it give me a literature review? And I wanted to know if it could do it with like very little prompting. Normally I say create a structure, create um, bullet points under that structure, expand on paragraphs. So those are the techniques I would normally use to create a literature review, but I wanted to go in the deep end and see what it could do. So here I've got a very simple prompt. Can you create a literature review for a paper using these sources. I didn't say what sources, I just said these sources because I assumed it would be all of these that were selected. And this is what it gave me. Oh, it starts so well because it starts at the top of the kind of information pyramid. It starts nice and broad. So here we've got Organic photovoltaics, OPVs offer a promising route to low cost. That is exactly how I would start a literature review. Then we've got the issues with the current literature, then we've got the promise, and then we've got uh, like a bullet point here of the key advantages, um, and then it goes into more details and um, challenges and future directions. So if you are starting a literature review and you want to ask loads of documents and understand a load of documents and how they relate to each other, this is a fantastic free way of doing that because you can obviously just select one paper and talk to that, but it gets even, even better. Check out this. All right then, down here, notebook guide. I clicked on it and I was like, what is this guide about? Click here, you can see we've got help me to create fact study, we've got summaries, all that sort of stuff. But here is what I wanted to know, audio overview. When you first go here, you've got a little button that says create audio overview and you click it and then you can go away, do stuff, come back and it generates this. It is a podcast from all of these sources. It's 14 minutes long, and this is what it sounds like. Print solar panels. This is, that's the that's a, my favorite bit, where it sort of like starts out, and it's like, okay, get the, 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 and it trips over its words. Nonetheless, it gets better. It gets really good, in fact. Anything, you know, like your clothes, windows, even entire buildings. That's the kind of crazy future we're talking about today, diving into the world of organic solar One cells. One person. And it's a pretty big deal. I mean, we all know the deal with traditional solar cells, right? They work, but they're bulky, expensive. Not exactly the most uh, flexible things in the world. Exactly. What? It's a bloody conversation between two people that sounds natural. And that is, I think, one of the biggest hurdles to this point that we've had with AI generated summaries is they don't sound natural. We get people slipping up, uh, 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 not speaking properly, just like a real podcast, backwards and forwards. They seem to be cutting each other off and bouncing ideas off each other. The natural speech patterns, the communication, the understanding of the science and making it a simple layperson summary is incredible. But here's the thing, I've listened to all of it. And because this is very, very technical, very detailed information, it's trying to kind of synthesize some of the very specific details, it gets a little bit wrong. And I know that because it's my research area. So you have to be very careful if you're using this to kind of understand something because some of the very minute details are a little bit incorrect, but nonetheless, the overall arcing understanding of these papers is there, and dare I say it, it's actually fun to listen to. I'm gonna leave this at the end of, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave this somewhere for you to listen to anyway, because it's incredible. Also, just go make your own, because it's free. It's so free that it's almost like stealing. <laughs> But organic solar cells, they could be the answer. Lightweight, flexible, and way cheaper. Potentially, at least. But like with anything this cutting edge, there are uh, challenges. Ah, uh, why does it know to do that? This is scary. And the Andrew Stapleton thesis. And the Andrew Stapleton thesis. It knows where it's getting this information. Anyway, you know it. Go try it for yourself. I think you'll absolutely love it. Um, and... Uh, 
yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. I think that's everything that you need to know about it. I reckon you just dive deep into the Notebook LM to see what it can do for you. And I think if you've got 50 documents that you wanna scan over, this is the best way to do it at the moment for free. Go check it out, I think you'll love it. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about academic research on steroids with new AI tools. Go check it out.